Good Friday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it to the end of another week. Hope you guys have had a great one. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Friday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Taganovich. And in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you'll be part of my conversation with filmmaker Edwin Stevens discussing his powerful new film, Alice is Still Dead. Enjoy today's program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Friday headlines in national news. The Associated Press says COVID-19 hotspots offer a sign of what could be ahead for the United States. The contagious Delta variant is driving up COVID-19 hospitalizations in the Mountain West and fueling disruptive outbreaks in the North, a worrisome sign of what could be ahead this winter in the U.S. While trends are improving in Florida, Texas, and other southern states that bore the worst of the summer surge, it's clear that Delta isn't done with the U.S. just yet. COVID-19 is moving north and west for the winter as people head indoors, close their windows, and breathe stagnant air. We're going to see a lot of outbreaks in unvaccinated people that will result in serious illness, and it will be tragic, said Dr. Donald Milton of the University of Maryland School of Public Health. In recent days, a Vermont college suspended social gatherings after a spike in cases tied to Halloween parties. Boston officials shut down an elementary school to control an outbreak. Hospitals in New Mexico and Colorado are also overwhelmed. In Michigan, the three-county metro Detroit area is again becoming a hotspot for transmissions with one hospital system reporting nearly 400 COVID-19 patients. The Delta variant dominates infections across the U.S., accounting for more than 99% of the samples analyzed. No state has achieved a high enough vaccination rate, even when combined with infection-induced immunity, to avoid the type of outbreaks happening now. In a deviation from national recommendations, Colorado Governor Jared Polis signed an executive order on Thursday that allows any resident, 18 or older, access to a COVID-19 booster shot, another step to prevent hospitals and healthcare workers from being overwhelmed by the state's surge in Delta infection. Progress on vaccination continues, yet nearly 60 million Americans ages 12 and older remain unvaccinated. That's an improvement since July when 100 million were unvaccinated, said the White House COVID-19 coordinator. In more national news, Texas AMN student hurt at Astroworld dies, death toll now at 9. A 22-year-old college student who was critically injured at the Astroworld Festival in Houston has died. The family's lawyer said Thursday, making her the ninth person to die after throngs of fans surged toward the stage during a performance by headliner Travis Scott. Concert goers have described the packed crowd growing dangerous even before Scott appeared on stage and seeing people collapse while the rapper performed. Scott's attorneys have said he did not know about the deaths and injuries until after the show. On Thursday, Scott's representative said Scott is distraught by the situation and has been trying to connect with the affected families to share condolences and provide them aid. Hundreds of people were injured in the intensifying surge, a criminal investigation into the deaths at Astroworld is underway. Scott was only minutes into his set when at least one Houston officer radioed over a police channel that the main stage had been compromised by a massive crowd surge. In more national news, defense rests its case at murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. The defense rested its case Thursday at the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, setting the stage for closing arguments in the shootings that left Americans divided over whether he was a patriot trying to take a stand against lawlessness or a vigilante. The defense and prosecution asked the judge to hold closing arguments on Monday, and he said he would take it under consideration. Rittenhouse's lawyers completed their side of the case on day 9 of the trial, a day after the 18-year-old Rittenhouse told the jury he was defending himself from attack and had no choice when he used his rifle to kill two men and wound a third on the streets of Kenosha in the summer of 2020. Prosecutors have sought to portray Rittenhouse as the instigator of the bloodshed, which took place during a tumultuous night of protest against racial injustice. In entertainment news, Chris Stapleton takes six at CMA Awards, Combs wins top prize. Chris Stapleton was the big winner with six trophies, including Song and Album of the Year, and Luke Combs claimed the biggest prize with Entertainer of the Year at the Country Music Association's Awards on Wednesday night. Stapleton won Song and Single of the Year for Starting Over, an album of the year for his record of the same name. And finally, in more entertainment news, Jerry Douglas, Young and the Restless star, dead at 88. Jerry Douglas, who played family patriarch John Abbott, 
on the young and the restless for over 30 years has died. Douglas died this week after a brief illness just three days before his 89th birthday, according to a family spokesperson. He last appeared on the CBS daytime soap opera in 2016. Our show was lucky to have an actor of his caliber join the Young and the Restless cast and introduce the audience to the iconic Abbott family, the executive producer of the Young and the Restless said in a statement. The Abbott character died in 2006, but Douglas continued to make special appearances on the show, most recently in 2016. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich. Mary Ellen, it's all yours. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Acknowledge your feelings. As you name your feelings, you tame your feelings by finding an appropriate response. You retake control of your personal power through becoming courageous enough to say these feelings out loud. This empowers you to let go of any painful feelings and shift to a healing state. When you understand these emotions, you can exercise control over them instead of allowing your emotions to control you. As you move past the apprehension you associate with expressing your distressing feelings out loud, you will be surprised to discover how liberated and lighthearted you become. Today, give a voice to your feelings as you let them go, especially the negative ones, so you can go about and enjoy the day. Filmmaker Edwin Stevens is featured in today's Entertainment Spotlight, right here on Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Filmmaker Edwin Stevens joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his powerful documentary about his sister, Alice is Still Dead, Here's a bit of our conversation. I, I had a chance to watch the film, and I have to say, there, there are so many emotions, I think, that, that the viewer will go through. But I want to ask you, I mean, what has it been like for you now to have completed the project, Edwin, and for it to be so personal and to see how people are connecting with it? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Um, you know, it's, it's been very positive so far. It was something that um, was very scary to walk into making this film, but uh, it, it did prove to be more and more cathartic as I went on. It really, it really uh, was like therapeutic art for me to make the film, and uh, it also you know, enabled me to create some new memories uh, by interviewing some of Alice's friends. I got some new stories that I never heard before. And uh, I just, you know, I really wanted to share how wonderful she was with the world and and maybe, uh, you know, help other people that are going through uh, similar tragedies uh, and loss um, connect with someone. And, and and I just really wanted to be honest about how I was feeling. You know, I think we we tend to uh, not want to discuss these difficult topics like grief. And I felt like that was missing in the film world was a, a really honest uh, documented portrayal of, like, first-person account. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We'll have you guys on Monday with more news, Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.